Greetings everyone and welcome to Galactic Colonies. I am Michael Gray and you are on New Def Gaming. We have a new game for Mondays. It fits the criteria of complexity, beauty, it has sound, sound effects, and it has a very deep and intuitive system of talents, skills, different type of resources and planets, and a bit of a puzzle nature to its gameplay. So you do have to figure out how you're going to grow your colony, how you're going to place your buildings, how you're going to develop colonists and get more colonists. You can even purchase boost. There are multiple boost slots that can be opened. There is an enormous number of things that we can do with Galactic Colonies. And the few issues it has and bugs with accessibility are quite minor. And we will talk about those in future videos as they become more relevant. For now, we're going to be doing a Let's Play series on Mondays for about an hour each time. Depending on how much fun I'm having, maybe longer. And I hope that you can play right along with me. And if you have questions, or if you have important feedback, or constructive feedback, or tips, or tricks, you can offer those in the comments below. As always, most games that I am playing will be listed on what am I playing in my description. You'll also have a link to whatever I am playing in my description. Check out my description for a ton of description goodness. It can help you find many of my playlists. You might find a game that you've never heard of and you could really enjoy it. You'll find the links to my playlist there for the most part. I hope everyone's had a wonderful weekend. I did too. You can watch a couple of my brief look-ins to what I was doing this weekend with Sweetie Belle. We had quite a nice time. And if you want to check those out, there should be a couple of really quick clips that are available on the channel. Watch those and you can pretty much get the gist of what we were up to. And I hope you had a wonderful weekend yourself. Now, on to Galactic Colonies. So, a little bit different than most Let's Play series, I will also be learning right alongside you. I haven't played Galactic Colonies in a long time, nor have I conquered Galactic Colonies. I have a lot of advanced buildings and technology because I've been traveling down the talent tree for quite some time. This game has been in development for a few years, and I've been playing this game for two years. Though I did not play it much of 2020, nor did I play it much of 2019. Though I did play it very heavily in 2018. Um, the accessibility elements uh, haven't been developed much since 2018, as far as I can tell. That may be inaccurate. Again, you can always leave information and email the developer. Uh, please always, if you are a visually impaired person and accessibility is an important thing to you as much as it is to this channel and myself, please give feedback to developers in a kind, loving way and they will definitely hear your words and get back with you. Also, encourage developers by contributing toward either their Kickstarters or whatever they're working on. And if you cannot financially afford to spend any money on a game, you can always spread the word about wonderful games through your social media, through your personal contacts. You can recommend it. You can leave very glowing reviews. There's many things you can do that cost you absolutely nothing to promote people who develop games for the visually impaired. And of course, you can always support myself by liking, subscribing, and sharing what I do here. That goes an incredible long way to helping me, as I don't currently have membership or any other paid methods uh, set up on the channel. And I do not receive very much financially from YouTube itself. It's not a source of income for me. I do this because I love talking about visually impaired gaming. I love talking to the my community. As a blind person and a gamer, I love 
you know, scratching that itch, which is gaming. And I love doing what I do for you all because you are all the number one community in YouTube. We are the number one visually impaired gaming community in YouTube and we will continue to be so. All right. So as I go through the steps here, I might be a little lost. So just stick with me. You might develop things and you might notice things or hear things. You can just take notes and you can also play yourself. And if you find something really interesting, please, if you want to be a channel friend, go ahead and put that information in the description. And I don't always get to it right away, but I will definitely mention that you've helped out the channel with your information. I really, really appreciate it. All right, let's keep moving here. I spent about an hour or so, maybe half an hour, going through as many menus as I could, uh, re-familiarizing myself with Galactic Colonies. It's been about two years since I've really actively played it, and I'm just going to have to take it step by step. I barely understand the buildings, and at the same time, I don't know if I'm going to accomplish many goals. I also did a lot of erratic building when I last left the current level I'm on. I don't understand the space travel and I don't understand the colonization parts. So I'm not really teaching, we're just teaching ourselves together. So there might be many things that those of you who are channel friends out there might be able to offer those who are listening to these videos. So it's okay if you know a lot more about Galactic Colonies than I do. That is okay. Okay, so one of the problems I've noticed already is that I have a living quarters error. They're starving. So um, there isn't any tremendous penalty for people starving, but we do need to fix this problem. So the only way we're going to fix this problem is we need to connect our living quarters to a warehouse where they can get food. So you all don't have any food. So let's see if we can get you all connected to a warehouse. Of course, we need to build a warehouse in an advantageous area. So let's find where we can build the warehouse. Empty region. Okay, we got an empty Button. region Double there. But the problem is you also have to be careful how far you build your buildings away from each other. There is a principle called connection. Connection means your buildings have like, it's like a wire coming out of your building. That's the best way I can explain it, that analogy. You get a couple wires going out and you get a couple wires coming in respectively. You have to understand how many outputs and inputs each one of your buildings can have. And then those outputs and inputs need to go to other buildings. And we're just going to have to learn step by step what are the best buildings to put these outputs and inputs into. Also, we're not going to be getting really fast, deep gameplay today, so if you're looking forward to that, you might have to wait till we get through a few episodes before my skill and knowledge about the game catches up with the learning curve. So for now, we're gonna be doing a lot of listening, we're gonna be going through a lot of the tutorial, and actually, let me exit quickly so excuse the screen i'm going to turn down my speaking rate Galactic headings volume speaking rate 85 80, 65 percent 60 percent words the inquisitor galactic colonies double okay. empty region galactic i colonies. am unable Button. to turn speaking double rate down inside of the app so i apologize for that okay let's okay Living quarters one. Error. Not enough food. Colonists Not are enough starving. Food. Okay. Good. Button. Turning down the speaking rate Double is really select. good. For some reason, winner's music. I can hear verbalization with voiceover at ninety percent, but whenever there is an overlay of music or sound effects, sometimes I will not hear the verbalization, and I if I do have a bit of a hearing disability, um, so it, it's a little tough. But it's okay. If I turn the speaking rate down, I'm a little bit better off here. Empty region. Okay, Button. there's an empty region Double next to our... Okay, every time we go back to your colonization, you're going to hear that... Eh, 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 like... Eh. 
that's going to be the error sound. Living quarters one. Error. See that? Not enough food. Error. Colonists so we're going to hear a sound and we're going to get an Button. error. So you'll know Double when you're select. making, you'll know when a building's not properly set up. You're going to hear that sound effect and you're going to get the error message. And after you hear error, you're going to get a brief synopsis of what the error is. In my case, it's saying that I don't have it connected properly. The colonists are starving, unfortunate, and that we need to do some fixing. We need to get our act together. Late. All right, Button. now I'm going to Double also to go select. through some of these really cool things. Now there are really cool regions. Okay, so you are on a type of map. Now the map moves, you don't know what regions are connected in a spatial way. As I think of it, when I play Galactic Colonies, everything to me feels like it's connected like a snake path. Like everything is like the colony base is connected to the lake, is connected to the warehouse, or however which way you build your colony. That's the best way I can describe it because there isn't a grid system. If there was a grid system, I would be hearing like rolls and columns. There are currently no rolls and columns. Everything feels like it's a snake path, like it's one grid to a grid next to it, to a grid next to it. Now, sometimes you start off in the middle of this really long single line of grids because you can actually move to the left or right of wherever you start off. So think of it this as a long line of boxes. That is the best visualization I can tell you, and that's the best way I can describe what exactly we are doing. We're just moving from one grid box to another. And as you were moving from one box to another, the best method is to listen carefully to what each grid box has inside of it. Once you thoroughly understand the layout of your grid boxes, moving back and forth will be no problem. You'll have an idea of how far apart these particular grid boxes are. And the reason why I'm talking about this is because you may not always be able to connect every building to another because you have a limitation. When you first start playing Galactic Colonies, you're not going to have the amount of grid connection space that I am currently using. I want to make sure you thoroughly understand that. You will only get what the game will allow you to get and you can upgrade that connection. Now here's where it gets complex. So you have a very long list of upgradable talents and technology and personal skills. So it's double system. So you personally have skills, but your technology currently has skills. And on top of that, your buildings have upgrades. And on top of that, there are boost and other special effects. You can also quickly upgrade and complete tasks and complete goals and make buildings do what you want to do by purchasing and using special power-ups. We're going to take it step by step. Now, we're not going to try to understand all of these things at once. We're going to piecemeal this out over several episodes each Monday for about an hour each Monday, which is going to be kind of become our game because I've just kind of decided that Galactic Colonies has enough complexity that me doing a series on it would do a really good service to the visually impaired community because even though this game has some accessibility bugs, it is a game that works and does have a lot of deepness, complexity, and fun. And I love a difficult game. I do not like super simple games. I do not believe as a visually impaired person, every game that I play needs to be simple. As long as there is complete accessibility, fully accessible games can be as difficult as they need to be. I don't care if you want to make this a Dyson Sphere, if you want to make this a complex, enigmatic puzzle that requires hundreds of hours of study, that's fine. My brain is up for the job. Simply make it accessible so that I can solve the mystery. I don't care how much of a Rubik's Cube it is. 
I love complexity. I love difficulty. I love figuring out puzzles. So the good thing about Galactic Colonies is that it is accessible. So we'll just move through each point till we can understand it. And together with our input and our output and our feedback to the developer, we can make this game fully, truly, ultimately accessible in every way, shape, and form. All right. Now, now that we know that there's a lake here, let's utilize one of the functions that you can. When you're in a new region, we can simply double tap on that region and find out information. We can learn what regions mean and also learn what each individual region does. So you always want to swipe completely toward the right to make sure that you hear everything that's in a region. Colony base, level one. Lake. Okay, we're in a lake. Button. Let's double go, tap to select. Let's double tap to select the, the lake region. Lake. All right, you're going to hear that click. So once you hear that click, you know that you have double tapped, and that is a confirmation tone that tells you that you have now selected the lake. Very important to make sure you understand the confirmation tones and understand what you are doing. Because the more you understand how you're moving, why you're moving and what's going to happen after you move, the better you'll be able to comprehend what you're exactly doing. Okay. Now that we are on the lake, let's listen for all the information we can learn about the lake. Lake. Okay, so I've swiped to the left to determine how much in a screen. Oh, you know, let's do a quick test and see if the forefinger to the top of the screen. I don't think it does function that way, but I'm going to double check. No, forefinger tap does not affect I do know there are some other voiceover controls that are not exactly the same that are you okay the voiceover controls within this game do not exactly function the way they would normally function for voiceover so let's get that out of the way they, this game has its own customized controls so with many games that use um, active touch and of course I'm never getting terminology correct I apologize um, the controls in this game are going to be customized. The developers made their own controls, so things are going to work slightly different. Because, for instance, if I two-finger touch the screen, you're going to hear how much money I have. I'm going to demonstrate that right now. Here I go. I'm going to two-finger touch the screen. You have $3,271. 30 energy cells. Okay. Normally, two-finger touching the screen would turn off all speech of whatever was being read. That is not how it currently works. In this game, two finger touching the screen tells us how much money and how many energy cells we have. What does money mean? Money in this game is used to purchase buildings, to purchase upgrades, to do all kinds of interesting things. You can buy really cool stuff. How do you get money? Well, you can get money by selling the items that you get. You also get mission rewards from completing missions. You also get money from completing objectives. You also get just random money from completing mission objectives are basic requests. So just wanted to get that out of the way. You will also get money if you log in every day and accept your daily rewards. And so it's really important and behooves you to make sure that you log in every day. My, one of my top 10 rules for playing any role-playing game is if the role-playing game has a reward that is simple enough that you just have to log in each day, please log in every day. You will receive lots of rewards. In fact, there aren't very many role-playing games I haven't beat simply by logging in every day. Developers are very generous with rewards. They just want you playing their game every day, and it's really simple. Just log in for five seconds, get your reward, double tap a couple of things, log out, you're done. In fact, there are many games I've played that I've beat the entire game by simply logging in each day consistently. You do that for a couple of years, see how much rewards you have, you'll be loaded. So log in every day, get your rewards, and that's a done deal, right? So that's a nice tip to keep under your hat. Okay. All right, so now that we understand that we should log in every day, let's find out more information from double tapping this region. Help. All right. Late. So you hear that there's Late. the kunk button that tells us that we can't swipe back to the left anymore. 
Once you have selected a region, you're stuck in this little menu system. Okay, so the way it works is that when you enter a menu item, you, you're going to go deep into this menu item. Now you don't get back out of this menu item until you select the back button and then you can move around a little bit more. Now that we've selected this menu item, we can either go deeper or we can come back out. Let's continue to learn. Let's go layer by layer. And that's the best way to learn any menu system. Discover, learn, practice moving around in each layer of a menu system. Learn everything that's accessible on that menu system. Take notes if you need to, or memorize if you have to. Whatever you need to do, what is, whatever is more comfortable to you cognitively, go ahead and do so. For me, for most games, I play a lot of games. So for me, a very good cognitive tool is taking notes. You can select some notes on your iOS device or tools or Android device. Whatever you're using to play this game, I don't even know if this game is is available or accessible on Android, so I shouldn't actually be stating that. Okay, so if you're playing this on iOS and you have a device that you can take tools, or you have a verbal recorder of some kind or, or some tool, you can simply record information. You know, one of the cool little tricks you can do if you really want to get some notes, you can actually screen record your gameplay. And while you're playing, you can go ahead and talk to yourself like I do, which is what I do in every video. I've been talking to myself for almost three, four years ever since I've become a YouTuber, maybe five years. So I'm very, I'm very adept at talking to myself. So you can take notes about whatever you're doing in a game. Like you can say, oh, note to yourself, whenever I click on a lake, there's a help menu and there's also information that it will explain to me. Later on, you can also edit those notes, take all that information, collect it all together, edit it all together, and you'll have a whole edit list, edited list of information that you can always refer to. Now, if you decide not to play a game for a couple years like I do, you can simply go back through that video and listen to all your tips that you've taught yourself. It's a great strategy if you really don't know what to do in a game. It really helps you to be able to go back through your video notes, which are going to be listened to for you if you're visually impaired, and you'll know exactly what you're doing. So whenever you discover something new, whenever you learn something new, whenever you are happy to discover something, just go ahead and talk to yourself and say, hey, person, I have learned that if you double tap this, you'll be able to find information. And if I double tap here, you can go to a link. And if I double tap there, I can learn this. If I swipe to the left or right, I can learn this information. Just make it a practice that you keep notes about the games you play so that if you take a break from the game, um, remove the game from your phone or re-download it, you'll know exactly what you're doing. Okay. All right, so moving on from that, the process of taking notes is very, very important. For me as a YouTuber, it is very important. Help. Okay, we've got button. a help button. Double so tap to select. Now that there's a help button, let's go ahead and hear what help has to offer us. I'm gonna double tap. Lake. All right, you heard that lake come up. Now it's speaking pretty fast. I've got the speaking rate on 60%, but it seems like even at 60%, voiceover is going to read quite quickly. So maybe if I want you all to hear, I'm going to have to turn the speaking rate down to 50% per, perhaps. I really don't know why 60% is reading really quickly, but that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to listen to all the information about Lake. Lakes. Lakes, okay? Close. And now you got the button. close button. So that will, select. that will take you back to the previous menu. Let's keep, and so we're deeper into this menu, all right? So we're now, we're now two double taps into this menu. Lakes. Okay, we just heard lakes again. So again, that's gonna be our heading. Although no buildings can be constructed on lake regions, they can be very useful. Lakes provide a food production bonus to adjacent hydro farms. Make sure to build your farms close to a lake to benefit from this bonus. All right, so we just learned, oh, of information now because I cannot 
individually because the rotor is not going to function within this game. So if you're used to listening to instructions word for word, you're not going to get that. So that's again why you might want to video yourself and take notes. You can also listen to the same passage several times. So I'm going to break down what we're going to learn from this particular aspect. So lakes are going to provide a food bonus and that's very important. We're going to want to build our farms or hydroponic farms. I think that's a term I gained from Star Trek. So you're going to want to build your farms near the lakes. There's a couple of tips here I want to bring to your attention. You can gain a special boon to farming from either a boost, which we will talk about maybe a little bit today or in future episodes. You can also gain an increase to your farming by your talent tree, your technology talent tree. And that's going to take an episode all by itself to kind of go through. Not going to be able to do everything at once. So again, I apologize if you were expecting me to go fast and heartily through everything. We're trying to take this step by step in these Let's Plays. So we're going to kind of make this a Let's Play slash tutorial. So I do want everyone to understand how to play it. So I'm taking it very slowly. So please be patient with me. So there's multiple ways to increase your production as a weird food production. And this is an extra ability to, to increase your food production. We simply need to put a food production building near this lake. Now there's something else important. We cannot build on top of lakes. So let's be aware of that fact. Adjacency. Okay. Although We're no buildings can be constructed adjacent. on lake regions, they can be very useful. Okay. Lakes provide a food production I bonus also... to adjacent height. You have three thousand two hundred seventy-five dollars. Okay. Thirty energy cells. Okay. I'm using the ability to two finger tap the screen to stop it from reading a very long passage, even though when you two finger tap, it's going to bring up your money and energy cells. And you might want to know what are energy cells. Energy cells are kind of like something I forgot kind of everything they do we will go through the whole tutorial for energy cells no worries let's just take it slowly we have all the time in the world um, so when you have a lake region we're going to receive a bonus to our food production there's a percentage of increase now you're not going to have lakes in the first couple of planets that you get I'm also throwing out as much information as I can but you do have it on certain planets. So it's good to learn what each planet does, okay? All right, now let's get to adjacency. This is an important term to understand. There are certain buildings that you're going to build next to each other. Now, adjacency is very important if you're going to receive bonuses. For instance, adjacency is a principle that's important for farming because your farms need lakes to increase their bonus. So that's where the adjacency principle comes into play. So let's let the tutorial or the help menu read off to us what adjacency does and we'll discuss it. Adjacency. Only farms directly adjacent to a lake will get the food production bonus. Okay, so only farms directly next to the lake will receive the adjacency bonus. So there's adjacency, adjacency bonuses, and there are some rules. So we know that we have to build a farm right next to a lake to receive the adjacency rule and the adjacency bonus. So that means adjacency will not be multiple distances away. Now, every time you swipe your finger to the right or left, you're going to move one adjacent spot. There is also, and please don't add, use this technique unless you are using low vision to play this game, but you can also move the screen by using two fingers and scrolling. I do not recommend scrolling for people who are visually impaired and have zero vision because it might be a bit confusing, but you can certainly use it if you develop a way 
to know exactly where you are. So there's no tool that we don't use as a blind person. We just use tools that have strong structures and that we can firmly utilize correctly. If a tool is a little flaky, then I'm not really apt to use it really quickly. Now, once I understand a tool in the game, then I'll talk about it, do a tutorial on it, and discuss how we can use it to make our life easier. I don't like using tools that don't make our life easier. So the scroll does not make our life easier. For me, being totally blind, it does not make my life easier. So I'm not going to use it. And nor am I going to mention how it saves time. I'm only going to mention tools that are reliable. All right, now that we've learned about adjacency and what bonuses we'll receive from adjacency boost, not boost, let me not use the wrong terminology again. There I go again. Um, let's just keep the terminology directly to what the game is saying. Whatever the game calls something, I want to be very specific and utilize that terminology. Ideally, I want to utilize the, tech, the terminology that the game uses, not my own terminology, because that tends to confuse people when they're listening to me. Okay. Okay, button. now we're going to get an Double OK tap button, because once you've gone through these help items, you're going to get your OK button, which can be double tapped, and that will take you out of this particular menu. Let's go ahead and experiment with that. Okay. You're going to get, Button. and of course, I'm Double always going to, I'm always going to go through every menu and find out the boundaries. Now, boundaries are not a term used by this game, but it's something in voiceover you'll recognize because there are these cluck, 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 dun, dun, sounds you'll hear in games that utilize voiceover principles in order to let you know that you're at the end of a menu. Most games have these sounds. They allow us to know that we've reached the end of our menu, the top of our menu, the bottom of our menu. It could be one of many different things. Also, if we're making errors, if we're confirming things, it could be anything. It all depends on what we're dealing with. It's the content of whatever we're touching and moving around. So it's a, it's a context kind of thing. In this particular context, that cluck cluck, Although no buildings can be constructed on lake regions, they can adjacency. Only farms. Okay. Okay. You hear that? That means Button. we can't go any Double farther. Tap to select. There is no more information in this help pop up. Another new term I'm going to use occasionally. So when help information comes up, I might say pop up because it's just kind of like if you visualize it, it's kind of like a little pop up information that is accessible to you. It's really a menu, but you can just think about it as something that just kind of comes up, gives you information, and we can just close it. Okay, so let's go ahead and double tap and close this little menu pop-up. Help. Did you hear Button. that? Double tap to select. So you're going, there's multiple things happened. So when we close with the OK button, the game made a very specialized sound. It went zzzz like a zipper closing. Kind of gives us that feeling that we just close like a cabinet or something. And that's a great verbal cue. That's a great audio, I, I keep saying verbal, that's incorrect terminology. That's a great audio cue that lets us know that that menu has been closed. Then the great thing is because of the accessibility in this game, we now hear voiceover which, by the way, will be your own voiceover voice. I really do like when they let me use my voiceover voice. And that's another gold star accessibility feature in Galactic Colonies. Whatever voiceover voice you're using will be the voiceover voice that will be active within the game. Okay? So that's very good to know. Because sometimes games use their own self acted whatever i don't know the exact terminology i'm i'm always struggling for the exact terminology because i want to be as clear and understandable as possible some games will have their own sound their own voice actor their own voice over and that will be what you hear it might be a male voice it might be a 
female voice, it might be a non-binary voice. Whatever it is, a sound effect voice like a computer, a robot, a monster, it could be one of many different things. And so you have to be able to clearly understand those voices. And also, you might want to check the settings because voiceover voices that are generated by games can sometimes be changed within games. Okay, so now that we understand that we've gotten out of that menu, we've heard that sound, we're now back to... Late. Help. We're still, we're now Button. back to Double when we to first lake. touched the lake. Okay, if we keep swiping to the right, back. you hear the back button, button which Double takes us lake. back out of this menu. And if you are sighted, there will be a box that is black with writing on the inside of it that will appear at the bottom of the screen. If you are playing this game the way I am, you do not need to pay attention to that. It doesn't matter. Because we are paying attention to the menu systems themselves. We don't need to use visual cues. However, those who are low vision or who are looking at certain imagery might use those to tell that they're inside of a menu. A lake region can provide food production bonnie to adjacent right. farms. And as you can this hear, can be with the we're right liquid back liquid. at the information we hear for the lake region. Food production, plus 35%. And then you're going to hear the food production increase, which is 35%. Now, your number will not be the same as mine. Your number could be lower. Your number could be higher. It depends on what your skills are. It depends on what your production technology is. It also depends on what your boosts are and other factors. Food production, plus 35%. All right, let's go ahead and leave the lakes. Now we're going to go ahead and let's find out if we can swipe up or down and, and affect anything. Food production, plus 35%. Nope. Food production, plus 35%. I swiped up and down and we didn't get any more information. We just have an ability to repeat the current line we're on. That in itself is also a valuable thing to remember. It means that when we want to hear a sentence again, we can always swipe Food production, up, plus 35%. Food production, swipe plus 35%. down. So if you want to hear whatever paragraph you're on, swiping up and down will repeat it. That's valuable. A lake region can provide food production okay, bonnie to adjacent farms. A lake region can provide food production bonnie. There we go. So it's a repeat effect. A lake region can provide food production bonnie to adjacent farms. This effect can be increased with we'll the automated We'll repeat skill. whatever we've just had voiceover read. Okay, let's go back. Back. And now let's button. double tap the double back tap button select. and leave this menu. Lake. Now button. you heard that click. Double tap to select. So again not a consistent sound when we're closing menus. So we're going to have to remember that there are different sounds. So there's a zzz sound effect when we leave the internal menu system, when we're um, listening in to the menu. And then there's a click sound when we come back out to the general map system on this planet. Now, there's an important thing to understand. There are many things that happen before you land on a planet and I'm going to have to go slowly through these things through different videos because there's so much to learn in galactic colonies. I am down on the planet. Now you might be in space and that's a totally different menu system. There are totally different things that happens. You're also going to be interacting with your boss which is a general of some kind or a scientist. I don't know what the NPC that you're interacting with exactly is. He does sound male, but he may be of any gender. I do not know, and I cannot verify it because there are no pronouns present in this game. So that's going to be a different set of interactions. And I will try to be as direct and informative about each menu system. Right now, we're really just going to be focusing in on being down on the planet. So there are so many different things to learn. I know it's wow. Okay, so there's a lot of complexity here. All right, now that we've learned what lakes do, let's keep moving around our colony and learn more about this wonderful planet that we're on. And by the way, yes, each planet has a name. And how are you going to understand and memorize those names? I cannot help you with that. You're just going to have to turn your voiceover down and try to sound out the name of whatever your planet is on. These are going to be sci-fi names, so some of them might be a little difficult. Because we can't use our rotor to spell it out, we don't know. 
I would like if later there was a complete ability for us to go through all of the things, like a history. I would love if the developer would make a history so that we can thoroughly analyze each planet and know exactly what we're doing on each planet. You also might want to try forefinger tapping after something is read and finding out whether it can be copied to the clipboard. So I will actually see if that works. Let's try that out. Colony base, level one. Okay, now that it's read Button. something, let's four finger let's four finger quadruple tap. A three finger quadruple tap four times and find out whether or not we can copy that text that was just spoken. One, two, Colony three, base. four. No, doesn't work. Okay, so we've already found out that we can't copy notes by four finger tapping. All I succeeded in doing was bringing up my colony base. Okay. Help. Back. Let's go back. Button. Colony base. Left okay. button. So Double tap to we select. can't necessarily get that to work. Now it might be because I didn't accurately three finger tap four times in a row. That's okay. We have plenty of time to experiment. Okay. Late. Living quarters one. All right. Error. Not enough food. Let's Colonists are starting. Let's learn about Button. our living quarters. Double so we got a select. whole lot of information from our living quarters. Let's go ahead and get the help menu active. Em colony base. Empty region. Hydroponic farm two. Empty re colony base. L late. Living quarters one. Okay, I moved too fast. I didn't double starting. tap. Okay. Button. You've got to lock down the area you are learning about and listening to. So let's double tap and lock it. Living quarters. Okay, you heard that click. That very polite, very cute sound, that click, that means that we are now, we've got this selected. So one of the keys for us to be successful is we're going to have to make sure that we definitely have double tapped and heard that sound, click, and that we are inside of the menu for this particular region grid. This grid box is now the colony. And well, let's get the exact terminology. Living quarters living quarters there we go let's keep it correct michael all right we are now in the living quarters so now that we are in the living quarters let's swipe to the left and make sure that there's no more information for us to learn living quarters okay there's no more text that direction we got that bloop which means we're at the boundary and now we can swipe all the way to the right till we hear all the information and also be aware you can two fingers swipe up and everything that's on the screen will be read to you from top to bottom. We talked about that in the first listen. And if you want to hear that entire video, you can find it in the playlist, which is now a brand new playlist that I created today called Galactic Colonies. And I will try to keep the, the oldest videos will be first in the playlist toward the newest videos last. So if you want to listen to playlists, most of my playlists are set up that way. Now there are only two playlists on New Def Gaming types that do not have it that way. Sweetie Belle and NDG Love, and also New Daily Good. Those videos are designed, and also What's It Like to Be Blind. Those videos are, that playlist is designed to be watched in any order that you desire. You do not have to watch it from the first to the last. It doesn't matter. Those, I record many different elements of things I've done in my life. Um, and I talk about many different issues and what's it like to be blind. So you do not have to listen to those videos in order. So feel free to listen to those videos in whatever order you want. When it comes to Let's Plays, it might be more in tutorials. It might be advantageous for you to listen to the videos from the beginning episodes to the later episodes so you learn each principle one by one all right now that we've gotten that out of the way let's find out what's going on with this help let's go Button. ahead and double tap that double tap help. to select yeah we're going to double tap and we're going to hear that listen for the sounds when we double tap living quarters so you hear that so we're like opening up like a sliding door. Almost sounds like one of those doors you'd hear in Star Trek or Next Generation or Deep Space Nine. You might hear some sound of a door because there's a lot of science fiction like effects, sound effects, which is, makes this game so adorable. Close. All right, we can also Button. close, but let's hear Double tap to select. what we've opened. Living quarters. Living quarters, so that's gonna be our heading. 
This building provides a space for your colonists to live. When enough food is available, new colonists will move in. Upgrading this building to a higher level will allow more colonists to live in it. Okay, a lot of information. So this is where our colonists live. Let's hear that one more time. This building provides a space for your colonists to live. When enough food is available, new colonists will move in. Upgrading this building to a higher level will allow more colonists to live in it. All right. So you can always swipe up or down to repeat information you've heard in the paragraph or sentence that you're listening to, the section that you are in. All right. So our colonists will live here and they will move in here as there is more food and also if we upgrade it. You may also upgrade using special items that upgrade. We might not have time to get into all of those today, but we will in future episodes. Now that we know that this is where our colonists live, let's also find out more information about it. I'm gonna swipe up again and let it repeat the information. This building provides a space for your colonists to live. When enough food is available, new colonists will move in. Upgrading this building to a higher level will allow more colonists to live in it. Okay, great. So we need to upgrade it to bring in more colonists and there needs to be food. So we already know there are some criteria in order to make this building be successful. All right, let's keep swiping and find out if we've reached the end of our help. Food supply. Oh great, there's another heading. So this heading is food supply. All right, so again, we can make it repeat. Food supply. By swiping up or down. Food supply. That's a down swipe. Food supply. That's an up swipe. So you can keep hearing your headings as much time, as many times as you need to. All right, let's find out about what food supply is. Colonists need food. New colonists will only move in when enough food is available. Don't forget to connect a warehouse to deliver food to your residential buildings. Okay, great. We got a lot of information there. So food supply is very important. So our colonists, no new colonists will move in until we make sure that there is food available for them. So we're gonna have to make sure that we get food. Secondly, we have to connect this building is connections are going to be something we need to talk about. There is a way to connect buildings to each other and there is a completely accessible menu, but it's a little tricky because we're gonna to need to talk about how we access those particular menus. And I will go through every step of that step by step. All right, I'll go through the entire process step by step. All right, so we need to connect this building to a warehouse. And no, I have not built a warehouse yet. And we'll talk about building we're going to talk about how do we build and everything. All right, so let's hear that one more time and find out what else we didn't discuss. Colonists need food. New colonists will only move in when enough food is available. Don't forget to connect a warehouse to deliver food to your residential buildings. Okay, so warehouses, we learned something else. Warehouses deliver food to our residential buildings. So these buildings, these living quarters are termed as residential buildings, okay? So these are our residents, this is where people live. So we kind of got that terminology going through our head right now. It's gonna be a lot of information, so that's why I'm trying not to go through too much at once. But we're gonna lay the foundation. We're gonna to learn to play this step by step. Okay. Okay, we've Button. reached the end. Double tap to so select. we've got our okay, we've got our- Living quarters. This building provides a space for your colonists to live. When enough food supply, colonists need food. Okay. New colonists will only move in when enough food is available. Don't forget to connect a warehouse to deliver food to your residential buildings. Okay, we're getting all our information. Okay. Okay. Okay, we got our clue. Button. Our sound, Double our clue sound. We're at the end of everything. We've heard all the information, so it's really important. If you're learning this game and listening for the first time, go through these menus and make sure that you have thoroughly heard all the information. I also want to give a gold star to the developer for creating natural pauses and also headings. Now, also the ability for us to repeat information is also another accessibility feature. There are so many games that don't bother to give us pauses for breath, so everything is read really quickly through. And that can sometimes be quite confusing when, as a visually impaired person, we are listening for information. The beauty of having information separated by headings and being able to repeat it and also hearing one section at a time, that cannot be understated how valuable that is. That's a great principle. Okay, now that we've got this information, let's go ahead and exit out of this help menu. Okay, help. And we heard that. Button. <sighs> Double tap to so select. So we've closed that door. We've zipped it closed. I like 
those different analogies to kind of make it so that we understand that we are now leaving. Okay? Now, we're still not out of this menu. We're still in the Living Quarters menu. We're going to come back out of this quarters by clicking back again or double tapping. Clicking, when I say clicking, it's an incorrect terminology. We're double tapping and activating. But when I say clicking, it's because I'm used to talking about computers. Back when I had some legitimate skills using computers, I currently don't have very many skills when it comes to the computer, but I will develop them. I'm going to be doing whatever it takes to develop skills so I can do everything for you all on this channel. It's all about you all, and I want you all to get the most enjoyment out of these accessible gaming. So I am currently working really hard to get my computer skills up to a level that can make it um, useful for the channel. All right, let's uh, go ahead and Button. double tap and go back. Double tap to now that we've learned about living quarters. Living quarters one, button. Double tap to select. Okay, you're going to hear that whole principle. Yes, it sounds like something went wrong, but no, that's just the error message because our living quarters is not currently functioning correctly. But it also is consistent. We come whenever we pass by a building that isn't functioning correctly, we get that error message. They like sound like that, okay? Let's keep learning more of the things that I've created here on the planet. Empty region. All right, we've got Button. an empty region. Double tap to How select. How fascinating. So let's learn about what empty regions are. Let's go ahead and select it first. Empty region. Got that click, that very pleasant sound, click. We are now in empty region. And yes, empty regions are, it's another grid. Now this empty region was adjacent to the living quarters that we just left. Okay, and you're going to notice that there are a lot of empty regions when you first are brought down to a planet to start your colonization pros uh, project, okay, or process. All right, so let's find out what is in this empty region. Now, each empty region is different, or some of them, or several of them might be the same, but they can all be different, okay? And it's random in many situations. You also might notice patterns. So let's find out what this empty region has. Help. But first, Button. let's utilize the help menu to so that we can understand what empty regions are in the first place. Let's go ahead and double tap that help menu. Buildings. All right. Buildings. Oh, by the way, there's something that I bypassed that I should explain. Empty regions don't happen automatically. You have to do something called explore them. And I'm also going to demonstrate that before the end of the video. This particular empty region was already explored by myself. There is a time process that takes place in order for you to explore it. And also, regions have different attributes. For now though, since I made that mistake and didn't explain to you that an empty region needs to be created, let's just simply go through the empty region aspects. Close. Buildings. Okay, buildings. The first thing we hear buildings. is buildings. After we've determined that there's no more information that we need to swipe left for, because we hear that buildings. Cloop, cloop, buildings and then cloop, cloop. So let's go ahead and swipe to the right and hear everything that's in this menu. Close. We got the close, Button. which means we can go back. Double tap, building categories. Building categories, that is our next heading. Let's find out what building categories means. There are three categories of buildings, residential, chimerical, and industrial. Constructing okay. a new building costs time and money. The more buildings of a type you have, the more expensive it will be to construct additional buildings. Okay. Uh, my voiceover is mispronouncing commercial. So my voiceover is pronouncing commercial as chimerical. I apologize for that. That is what my voiceover does occasionally. It's commercial. Okay. So let's hear that again. There are three categories of buildings. Residential, chimerical, and industrial. Constructing a new building costs time and money. The more buildings of a type you have, the more expensive it will be to construct additional buildings. Okay, There's a lot of information there. So we have already heard the three different type of buildings, residential, commercial, and industrial. And these will correspond with your technology talent tree. And yes, we will thoroughly discuss the technology talent tree in the future episodes. All right, these buildings become more expensive the more that we build. So. Obviously, there's already a strategy present. You have to be very wise with how many buildings you build of each type because the next building you build of the same type will get more expensive. And of course, 
Eventually, it's going to become inefficient to build too many of the same type of building unless we're getting a lot of direct results from building it. In other words, we don't want to build more than we have to, and we only want to build what we need to build to complete our mission. Now, if there are ways to make profits, we'll talk about that in future Tips and Tricks episodes. All right, now that we know that there are some costs related to building duplications of buildings, we've also learned the three different types of buildings. Let's find out if there are any more headings and information we need to learn about. Research and improve. Oh, good, we have a new heading, Research and Improve. This will have a lot, this will have totally to do with the individual buildings, the residential, the commercial, or industrial. Let's find out what Research and Improve, research and improve does. I'm gonna to swipe to the right. Make sure to research new technologies to lower construction time and cost for your buildings. Completing research tasks can lower the cost of building colonies drastically. All right, so we have to make sure that we spend time researching and improving buildings. These will, the research and improvement process will drastically reduce the cost of our buildings. It will reduce the time they take to get built. It might also increase certain attributes of the building. So spend some time making sure that you do research. Now, the game's initial tutorial will walk you through the process of technology improvements. The game has a gold star for making a very immersive and fun beginning tutorial. I did not have the ability to demonstrate that when I first did my first listen because I'd already completed it. Of course, I would always like to say to developers, if you can allow us to repeat tutorials, that would be always great. It's really great for YouTubers, it's really great for those who stream games so that we can demonstrate to the listeners and the people who are watching the videos exactly how to enjoy and listen and learn from tutorials. I really love games that allow us to repeat tutorials. It can be quite useful, especially if we put the game down for a while and haven't used it in a long time or played it in a long time. So making tutorials repeatable is quite valuable, especially for players who are visually impaired so that they can re-familiarize themselves with certain aspects of the game. All right. Now that we know that we need to research and improve our buildings, let's find out if there's any more information that we can gain from this help menu. Okay. Nope, we're at the button. end and there's an okay Double button. Tap to select. Okay. And there's the cloop button. sound, which means there's Double nothing else to learn there. So let's go ahead and go back by double tapping. Help. And you hear that sound, Double tap close to select. that menu. And now we are back at the original menu that we opened. And we've learned everything we can about empty regions. So think about empty region as being an area that are, we are preparing for construction upon. Okay, so it's like we've done some work, we've explored it, we've made sure there's nothing dangerous around, we've made sure that the areas may be level. Because I'm assuming that we have some kind of construction device that basically makes everything flat. We're terraforming. We're, it looks like we're at our time limit today, too. Wow, we've been working really hard. Okay, so it looks like we're kind of come to the conclusion of this video, and I'd like to keep these tutorial sessions and Let's Plays to about an hour each. I don't want to extend it much longer than that. I don't want to become too esoteric. All right, so for now, we're going to go ahead and stop. We've gone through a few of the regions. We've talked about the grid selection and moving along. We've talked about activating the help menu, and we also talked about the headings, repeating information, and learning as much as we can about each region. We've also even discussed some strategies, tips, and tricks. So for now, we're going to stop, and we will come back next Monday again. I will also continue to do my own work, like my daily rewards, and continue to do some upgrades and stuff like that, but I'm also going to go through each part of this particular game grid by grid section by section building by building we're going to learn everything going to take you through every part of this game no worries all right as i always say to you love yourself each other always be kind and let's hang out again tomorrow take care and have a wonderful day